could tell us about the philosophy of the Lancelos project? Yeah. So uh, Lancelos emerged as a response to uh, some of the work I was doing as a small-scale community miller, um, really focusing on challenging those dominant notions and structures of how grain ought to be produced, uh, focusing on the symbolic aspect, focusing on bringing people together as a means to produce something that's so essential to us or has become so essential to us. So um, looking at what has been done in the past and the movement away from that and really scaling that down, if you will, that the notions are always to scale up, scale up, and, and Lawn Loves has really been about scaling down so we can recognize once again the roots of both the community that makes grain and um, the grain itself. Mm. What do you think uh, the Lancelos project has to say about the future of food and the future of Vancouver? I think it says that there are people interested in, in challenging uh, traditional food systems, traditional supply chains, and not in a, a confrontational way, in a creative way, in a new way that that's born from history and culture, and making hybrid supply chains and using innovation and community capacity to draw something uh, that hasn't been done before. And even if we use Lawns to Loaves as to speak to our desire for change and to speak to our desire to be critical citizens and to question what's going on, I think it's accomplished its goal. Mm. Great. Um... Why do you think that wheat is a like a powerful uh, way to challenge that? What is it about grain that uh, is appealing? I think for a number of reasons. Um, I always talk about you know how of all the commodities in the world, wheat has been taken from us and um, obscured from us by companies you know that in control the majority of the the wheat around the world. It's become something that's traded and so far removed from uh, the loaf of bread rising on the counter that we've really lost touch with our grain. Um, the second thing would be the scale at which it occurs in a conventional sense has made it possible for it to be uh, taken from us because we can't even wrap our heads around 60 million tons of, of wheat and, and rye and barley and these things whereas um, wheat, the, the symbol of wheat and the history of agriculture is the history of grain production so when we, we go back there and we look at the social changes and the, the ecological changes, the philosophical changes the way we changed landscapes and the way we changed as humans with wheat as that guiding symbol, I think we can use that in, a, in the year 2011 as we're facing a new set of challenges um, regarding scale, regarding consolidation and concentration, regarding a loss of land and, and new styles of agriculture, we can look back to that symbol of wheat and it reminds us somewhere in our collective consciousness that, that it was our, our light at the end of the tunnel in a, in a transition time of humanity. Mm. Last question about uh, that future and, and where, um, where we're going with our future. How, like, what is your vision of wheat production in the future? What do you think uh, would be a, a sustainable or green future? Uh, how does food relate to that? Yeah, I think with wheat in particular, um, we certainly can't abandon uh, the work that's been done in, in seed breeding and mechanization and, and the large farms that we have. I think um, the future will be for some of them to scale down, for some of them to become polycultures um, that grow wheat as part of a healthy farm system um, with more local capacity to process and store and market that wheat so as not to be yeah, shipping it all around the globe. I think countries that are large wheat producers will have will have the advantage that they have embedded knowledge and embedded machinery and infrastructure built into that system. It's just a matter of um, looking at wheat from a food sovereignty perspective and, and, and saying that we have the right uh, to control this locally. We have the right to keep British Columbia grown wheat in British Columbia, even if it's grown in the north and shipped from the ports, and we don't see it. We have a right to eat that. We have a right to grow the types of seeds that we want to grow, the varieties that we want to grow, and we have a right to, to process those and market them and, and consume them as citizens. So